witness the horrors of what one virus can do. The coronavirus brought the entire world to a grinding halt and it took massive containment measures on a global scale. Vaccines were developed rapidly to halt the spread of the virus. That was just one virus. At its peak also, its fatality rate was not more than 4%. And now, what would happen if the world comes face to face with an even deadlier strain of an unknown virus? Well, there could be many such viruses hidden deep within the permafrost. The permafrost is a permanently frozen layer or one on or under the Earth's surface. It consists of soil, gravel and sand, usually bound together by ice. And now a warming planet is causing the glaciers to melt. What I mean to say is that our protective white layer is melting more rapidly than we can imagine. Earlier, our main concern was the amount of greenhouse gases being released from the frost melting away. But now we have a different concern altogether. It is the release of dangerous ancient microbes buried deep under the permanent frozen zone. And this is according to researchers who revived nearly a dozen viruses, including one frozen under a lake more than 48,000 years ago in the Siberia region of Russia. The researchers who have revived a number of these zombie viruses, as they're now being called, have found the potential revival of the potential revival of the potential revival of viruses could infect animals or humans. Now, this is quite problematic. Moreover, in a report published in Science Alert, the same was reiterated by the lead researcher. Jean-Marie Olympic from the French National Center for Scientific Research said that these reanimating viruses are potentially a significant threat to public health, although further study needs to be done to assess the danger that these infectious agents could pose as they are eventually released into the atmosphere. Now, this is a cause of concern as a virus is something that is neither living or dead. And it has the capability of being dormant for many years. But now with the permafrost melting away, these viruses pose a significant threat. Pose a significant threat. Pose a significant threat. To public health. And clearly, it once again shows the perils of playing with nature. And clearly, more research is needed to evaluate the dangers associated with climate change. Now, to understand what this means, we are now being joined by Sarah Pitt from London. Sarah Pitt. Pitt. Pitt from London. Sarah Pitt from London. She is the principal lecturer in microbiology at the University of Brighton in England. Welcome to the broadcast, Sarah. Hello. So this is, of course, a rather unique finding. We're talking about zombie viruses. Can you explain how such viruses can survive for millions of years, frozen in glaciers and ice, and how exactly can they be brought back to life? Well, as you were saying there, because the permafrost is, is like a giant deep freezer, a very low temperature deep freezer, viruses can survive under those conditions. We keep them in the laboratory at minus 80 degrees and, and they stay um, such that we can grow them again at once we thaw them out. And viruses do need to live in organic material, such as an animal that died having still carrying that infection and if that happens you know the animal is preserved intact and so all any infectious agents that might be inside it so as everything starts to thaw out the because they've been perfectly preserved all the the cells inside the animal the tissues inside the animal start to um, revive and the viruses and inside them could also can also revive at the same time Sarah, also, can you tell us how these viruses could infect other organisms and spread rapidly, even before we can find a way to negate them? Well, the thing about it is that if they're viruses which are thousands of years old, they might be ones that we're not particularly familiar with. They might be closely related to something that we have around now, but, but it won't be something that we necessarily know. So if animals or even human beings get infected with those viruses, they we might not recognise the symptoms. And we also might not have the diagnostic tests ready to go quite soon enough. And then that's how things spread so rapidly. As you were mentioning there, we've just, we're well, we're still in the experience of COVID. It spread so rapidly because people didn't necessarily know the symptoms were different from flu or a cold in good time. And then it took us a little while to actually develop the diagnostic tests. We did a really good job with coronavirus because it is closely related to it, the SARS 
um, COV-2 coronavirus was closely related to SARS-1 and other sorts of common cold viruses. So we had a bit of a head start from a diagnostic point of view. Whereas if they're sort of thousands of years old and we don't know anything about them, it will take us a bit longer to get the diagnostic tests. And so the virus could really spread right. before we've really noticed that it's there. Right, absolutely, Sarah. But, you know, while this is being hailed as possibly a scientific discovery, it's a little worrying as well. There's a question of ethics also that comes into play. Humans playing with nature can cause havoc. It's a recurring theme in most Hollywood films, especially when you talk about zombie viruses. Can you share how climate change poses dangers which have not yet been figured out? Well, in the same way that we don't really know what's going to happen as the climate across the world changes, where um, things becoming, um, things thawing out, which might have infectious agents inside them, there's also a um, potential risk for things like anthrax, because the spores from, that's caused by a, a bacteria that produces these very, very resistant spores. And again, they can be inside animal skins and the bodies of humans who've been infected with it and they potentially survive um, a, for a very long time and, and very very well under sort of con um, good frozen conditions or be just being deeply buried in the earth actually just being deeply buried in the earth actually and another thing that can happen is things like mosquitoes things like mosquitoes things like mosquitoes perhaps change their habits and their habitat and they might actually start as as with global warming as the temperature warms up everywhere and it also is more wet that the thing with um global warming is as we've all noticed there's a lot more rain and that's very good for mosquitoes they could potentially i'm not saying they will yeah, i'm not saying they will yeah, i'm not saying they will but they could potentially spread around the world and take things like i don't know zika virus or malaria to countries that didn't previously have them because they don't have the right species of mosquito so right. that, that could all happen. It's all in theory, but it's something that we do need to be aware of.